Hi, this is KG, and today I'll be doing a setup video for the On 4K Pro streaming Google TV device that I got from Walmart a few weeks ago. I had done an unboxing video, and there you can find that in the upper right corner here where I unboxed the device. And today I'll be setting up this device, and then following this video, I'll have another video posted shortly that does a review and comparison between this device and the Chromecast by Google TV streaming device. So with that, let's get started. So here's the device. I have that in front of my TV here. I haven't connected it to anything yet. So I'm gonna connect. Uh, I have my ethernet cable ready to go, the red one, and then the HDMI, which is connected to my receiver, and then uh, the power cable. So let's go ahead and get that connected. All right, so I have it connected. Now I'm gonna turn on the TV and uh, go through the setup process. All right, so I have my TV turned on and it's set to the input on my receiver that the on pro is connected to uh, i haven't plugged in the power for the on pro yet let me do that now there we go so you should see the lights come on shortly here on the on pro it's powering on the on welcome sc screen and then uh, it'll step me through the on-screen instructions to set up the device probably first thing it's going to ask me is to pair the remote so here we go so it's asking me to pair the remote by pressing the back button and the home button so i'm going to do that now so back button and the home button for five seconds when it starts blinking it's in the pairing process it can release and it should find it there we go so it's found it it's pairing is successful uh, now it's going to ask me to step through the on-screen process, selecting my region and country. Now it asks me for setup with the Google Home app, or if you see the bottom of the screen here, I can highlight it using the remote down arrow. I can do it on the TV uh, as well if I don't want to do it through the Home app. Setting it up on the TV is a little bit cumbersome because it will ask me for my Google account uh, details, including username and password, and I have to enter all of that using this remote which uh, then it'll bring up the virtual keyboard and then I have to kind of traverse or navigate to each of the letters and type each letter out. So it's gonna be very cumbersome. So I'm gonna just select the Google Home app method. And for that, I have to switch to my phone, I scan this QR code with my camera app, and then it'll take me to the setup process on the Google Home app. I'll do a screen recording for that so that I, that's also documented. I'm gonna open up my camera app to scan the QR code. Point it at the QR code, it pops up the URL, click on the URL, and it goes to the Google Home app. It's gonna scan for this device. It'll sh it should find it since it's on my same network as my phone is. And there we go, it's finding it connected to the OnPro. It senses that it's an Ethernet connection, click on next, uh, accept terms and conditions. And then it asks me for where you wanna put this device. Uh, so I'll just put it in my family room and then it's gonna attempt to connect to it and transfer over my uh, account credentials. Here, there we go. So as you can see, it's gonna then set up, it's gonna ask me for a verification. Yes, that's me. And then it's gonna sign into that, that account uh, on my on Pro. And then it's assigned in. Let me just do this Google Assistant setup here. So this permission comes in handy if you're gonna search on your TV, across your TV apps, you can actually use Google search across your TV apps. So for now, I'm gonna skip this and say no thanks. And then it's gonna ask me to set up voice match. I am going to just say confirm, because it already has my voice recordings on my account, attached to my account, so that's gonna transfer over. I'm gonna say confirm, and the settings will apply. So there you go, it's set up. So it should ask me now, it's asking me for what apps I need installed on the device, and I'm gonna just these three are good for now. Um, we can always add later. I can always download new apps on the device directly later on. So I'll go ahead with that. Uh, not now. I don't want to choose an ambient mode. Going to skip it. And then uh, that's it. Really, it's set up here is finished, and it's going to switch to the uh, TV now. So back to the TV. It's going to continue um, on on there. So it says it's got everything it needs. Click on got it. So now it's gonna ask me to, if I wanna set up this remote to control my TV as well as my receiver. So I have a receiver that processes all the audio 
and then uh, the TV obviously shows all the content, the video content. So you can skip this if you don't have, uh, if you don't want the remote to be able to turn on your TV. But I don't see why you wouldn't. So I'm going to set up the remote to both control my TV as well as my receiver. That way I can just use one remote, which is this on TV remote, to uh, uh, control both my TV, the on device, as well as the receiver. So here we go. Click on set remote. And then I'm going to say, yeah, so in this, in this case, I have an AV receiver, like I mentioned. You may not. Uh, you can choose if you don't. You can just choose TV. If you have a sound bar, you can choose that. So you can control your sound bar as well. So right in my case, I'm going to select AV receiver. And then the brand of the receiver. Mine is an Anthem. Oh. So uh, it's going to try and run a quick volume test to see if it can control it. I'm going to click on next. All right, so it's, it's asking me to see if the volume buttons work. So I'm going to try that real quick. I can't really hear anything, so let me turn up the volume. The volume might be turned way down. Let me try that. And you should be able to hear audio now. There we go. Volume down, volume up. Yeah, it's controlling the volume through my receiver using the on remote. So I'm good here. Click on yes, volume buttons worked. And now it's gonna ask me if I wanna be able to switch on my TV with the on remote. I'm gonna say yes, and then ask me for the brand. It's a Sony. There we go. It's a pretty responsive remote, so that's good. And good. it's good that they've thought of this. They're gonna, instead of scrolling through a big list of brands, you can just go through the alphabet and then select your brand from there. So where do you go? Sony, here we go. Now it's, it's asking me to point this remote to the TV and it should be able to turn control it by turning it off and then turning it back on again. So let me try that. All right, I powered it off, it worked. And then it, it had asked me to wait for, wait for eight seconds before turning it back on. So I'm gonna do that, turn it back on. There we go. So it turned it back on and that worked fine. So I'm going to say yes. Most TV should work. So there you go. Now it's going to set up my Google TV home screen, start exploring. So here we go. That's the Google TV home screen on the on. Now I can, I'm controlling it through my on remote. Nice and easy. All the apps that I wanted are here. So if you notice, I only had like a few apps selected like YouTube and um, Prime, but it had this one has a bunch of other apps. These are apps that come pre-installed on the on uh, and it should let me uninstall it if I need to. So let's go try do that real quick. Is that on like having all these other apps that I don't use on my device taking up space. So let's try to do that. Go to settings. I can go to apps and see all apps. And here we go. So there's Disney Plus, Hulu. I'm gonna try and uninstall it. So first of all, this is a good thing. The current Android TV box I have, which is the Nvidia Shield TV, there are these system apps as well, but I'm not allowed to uninstall them. It's not, uh, unless I root the device, which I didn't wanna do. And it also has a limited space. So, so it's actually taking up space and I can't do anything about it unless I root the device, which I didn't wanna do. So in this case, it's good that they allow me to uninstall this app without uh, rooting the device. So I don't, because that way I can reclaim some of the space. Not that space is an issue here. It has enough space on this. This device actually has 32 gigs of uh, onboard storage. So there's plenty of room. My old N NVIDIA Shield only had 16 gigs and the apps were not uninstallable. So I'm going to uninstall these couple of apps, which I don't use at all. So there you go. Nice and easy. So let's go back to the home screen. If you go with the back button a couple of times, it takes you back to the home screen. And there you see now all your apps are listed here and none of the other apps that we just uninstalled are listed anymore. So there you go. That's, that's basically it. It's already signed into my account. If you go to the settings. So this is the HDMI CEC functionality that allows me to control the TV, the on box itself and the receiver all through my on remote. Resolution is set to 4K. That's my TV resolution. Uh, so good there. It supports Dolby Vision, so I'm gonna set. I've already. It's already set out of the box on to Dolby Vision. No need to change any of that stuff. So that's it. And then I'm leaving this to automatic so that it can support. Uh, it can switch to whatever audio format is available. 
So now if you see here at the top corner, it shows update your remote. So it seems like there's an update for the remote as well. I press, it says to press the home button, I'm going to do that. And then here we go. So it, there's a message here asking me to update my remote. So I'm going to just do that real quick. Uh, should take should be a quick quick update and then if you see been during the update process the small LED up top turns red and stays solid red until the update is done and this this is a relatively quick update I'm not sure what the update is about but just want to get the latest and greatest on all the software so here we go it's updated now it's back to the, TV, the LED turned off it's all good everything is updated and then if I go back to the home screen so there we go Nice and easy. I like the the fact that it's the apps are uninstallable, has double the storage that than the uh, Chromecast uh, by Google TV, uh, and it's it's very responsive. The remote is very responsive, very clicky. I don't know if you can hear that on there. Very clicky remote. I like that. Uh, feel is good. Uh, hand uh, the remote in the hand feels nice to hold. Unlike the Chromecast with Google TV, the the remote is too small. It's almost one and the shape also is very slippery this one feels right in my hand and doesn't want to slip out I like that it has all these dedicated buttons and and a separate mute button which is good also so in my next video I will do a review of the Chromecast with Google TV and this on box and I'll go into more details on, on the differences and, and uh, uh, in between the two so that's it for the setup for this it's already ready to go so I'll be doing a review video next comparing this with the Chromecast by Google TV device, uh, including the remote comparisons and software and speed and performance and all that stuff. So stay tuned uh, for that video, subscribe, and have a nice day.